Hi, welcome back. Recently, I've received a number of messages and emails asking what they're doing wrong using the Orion micro welder because they're unable to weld securely. Uh, sometimes they burn the jump ring. I'm going to try in this episode to show you some of the common mistakes as well as do a few fun experiments to see what happens with thicker jump ring and higher power or lower power and the position of the electrode. Um, see what you can do. Hope you enjoy this. So here are a few things I'm going to try to demonstrate for you. Um, and I'm going to use slightly bigger rings so that just to, to demonstrate the idea. Um, but know that with thicker rings, you might have to spot weld a few places. But vast majority of people that ask, they're actually just welding bracelets with thin jump ring. So I'm going to start de by demonstrating a few of the common problems. Okay, so I'm going to start off with five watts. Of, okay, some of the common things, common problems. The jump ring is not closed properly. So they close it thinking that this is closed. Okay, so I'm just going to leave a slight gap to demonstrate what I mean. Okay, now I'm going to try that again. So you see a slight gap. and clipping it a little bit too far from the ground. And so what happens now, you'll see, is that the sides have been burnt. And in fact, the gap has gotten bigger. And you keep trying to make it bigger or a bigger fire. Okay, so it never really meets. But what happens if you try to do in 12 and a half watts? Okay, so this is what happens. It, you're very high fire, they're not connected pro properly, and it's burnt and rolled back from the previous amount of tiny gap. That happens a lot. If the two pieces are not touching and it is too high of fire, it rolls back and now you've got this situation. How you need to close is pivot. Like as you close it, you're pivoting like this so that you're moving it so there's no gap. So you can see that the gap, I mean, the, the cut is here, but it is now touching and then I do, I'm gonna to point to it first. Sometimes, because this is actually a 20 gauge, it's thicker. Um, and I find that jump rings, you don't need to be that, it doesn't need to be that thick, but if you're gonna make it thick, you have to weld all the way, number of welds. Okay, so here. So that has done it. Another common mistake is touching the side and not at the point. Oftentimes, when we put it on the side, doesn't doesn't work as well as if we hold it down at the point and it snaps. So you see, it needs to connect like this as opposed to on the side. See? 
even though it sparked a little bit, it's not the same as if you point it. So here I repeat the same process with a thicker jump ring and a little bit more power. It is completely done. So in that time, I did point right to it, touching in right on right on the seam. Um, and I, without using my pliers, I could tell because the seam is no longer there. It's 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 a, a, a solid weld. Okay. So if you find that it is you have thick jump ring, then what we want to do is use stronger electricity with the little jump rings and when the ground is very um, right close it's very easy to go. Now I'm going to do another experiment to show you with a thicker jump ring but the ground closer and still low power and you'll see what happens. It's right here. This seam here. Now that did, that did snap, but it did not, it wasn't strong enough to go through. Oh, see, it, it did work, but it was small and um, I twisted it and it did break off. So it ended up, you have to do all the way around. And it did work. So if it seems like this is closer and also that uh, if it's thicker, this might be a six, an 18 gauge or 16 gauge, you, have, you do have to zap around. That's seven and a half. Let me see if, if I can break it. No, I cannot. Okay, so seven and a half works even with this. But let's see. Let's see what happens. Oh, what will happen at 20? Okay, see if I can melt it. Okay, <laughs> Woo. now that was fun actually, and it's hot. I can feel it here, but okay, look at this. This is so cool. There's fire scale, but look at it. It warped it and there's a lump of gathered metal here. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. So that was too powerful. The other thing is, and I noticed that, see, if you can see this jump ring. I'm gonna show you. One side is flush, one side is pointy. So oftentimes what you have here is someone cut it like this, a jump ring. This side is flush, but the bevel here has made it so that it's gone pointed like this, and there's not enough touching surface. So proper good jump rings, they need to be flush on both sides. But say if you have something like this, it's an easy thing to somewhat fix. If you don't have a saw, you use turn your pliers the other way so that flush side and you try to cut it so that it is flush now we do it again this time we move it in back and forth until it is flush Like this and also make sure that you're looking at this angle and they're they're not like this even though you can see it it's, there's an overlap 
You want it to be this way as flat as possible. Okay, and sometimes it doesn't, it clicks, but it doesn't fire. There we go. I'm gonna now demonstrate another common mistake that makes it difficult to weld properly. We get nervous and we, it clicks. And before it is able to snap, because it warns you with a click. And before it can do it, you're, you're holding back because, because we get startled. But anyway, I'm going to show you what happens, what I mean. So I'm gonna go back to five watts because it's a small guy. But what, there's gonna be a click like this right before it snaps. But when we hear it reflexively, we remove like this. So it doesn't work. You have to actually hold it down and have it in full contact. So let me see if I'm gonna make sure that I can do a close up. Okay. There. So even at five watts, I held it down with full contact and it's, it worked. So I'm going to use this to remove the fire scale so that you can see it a bit more clearly. Let me see. Okay, so sometimes I've done all the right things but it doesn't snap and it could be that this is all gunky. And what you can do is you sanding discs that Orion has, or you can get your own. And here, I'm just gonna clean it out a bit. And if you don't have a Dremel or a disc, you can just use sandpaper or a metal file to do the same thing. Okay, so you see, So now it is a lot cleaner. We're gonna try that again. So go back to five watts. And I'm going to weld this. There we go. Um, you can hear the difference too. So, so to recap the common mistakes, when the jump ring sides are not touching or if the sides are not completely flush, there's not enough connection and it will not fire. If the electrode is touching on the side, on its side, and not at the point, it will not fire. If the jump ring is thick and you don't use enough power or if you don't do spot welds all the way around, it will not be secure. And if you use too much power, it can warp or melt your entire jump ring. And if you withdraw this, the electrode far too early before it fires, it will not work at all. I hope you found this to be informative. I wholesale jewelry components, chains and jump rings. I'm gonna leave a link below as to where you can purchase. And also a link with more information on the micro welder that I've used.